Hello guys and welcome to my YouTube channel and in this video tutorial we're going to start building our food delivery app. A lot of you guys asked me to build this application with them and that is exactly what we're going to do in this video series. So I'll try and my best to explain certain things to you, I mean the basics of Lata to you, but then if I'm not able to explain them to you or you don't understand them well, you can leave a comment below and I'll try to explain to you later. So let's start. So in Flutter, we need this main order file. That's where your program execution will start. You need to write the, the, the main method here. And this main method is required to run your application. So let's start with that main. Because in, in so many languages, we always need the main method. That's where the execution of your program starts. So we need this main method. And then this main method is just required by that. But to actually inflate our mobile screen with the application that we create we need another method called a run up method which is given to us by the the flutter team and this run up method can only be found in the material dot that file so let's import that and then say package and let's say flutter material dot that so when we import this one, you can get access to the runup method. And in this one, this runup method it just accept the main root widget or any widget and then inflates our screen with that widget. So we need to pass in our main root widget to um, to this method. So let's do that. Let's create an instance of a, a widget called app. We've not created this app widget yet. So we will do that. Let's go to our leaf folder. Let's go into it and then create our leaf folder called SRC. And then in this SRC, we create another file called the app.dat. And this app.dat will be the main root widget of our application. Because it's going to be a widget, we also need the, we also need to import the package flutter material.dat file. And then we need to create the app. And then say a stance stateless widget. Yeah, I'm using a stateless widget because in this particular file or in this widget, there's nothing going to change. Everything will be static. A stateless widget is simply a widget whose state will never change or whose information will never change. It will remain the same. So with time, as we build this application, you understand the difference between the stateless widget and then the stateful widget. And then we need to override another method called uh, widget build method and then we need to accept the build context and here because this is a method return and the return type of this method is what the widget we need to return a widget here so here we're going to return the material up so material up here. and then this material up contains the metadata of our application it contains the team the routes the home of our application so first let's create the title of our application and say food delivery app and then let's also create the team for our application so we need a team and then also I can say the primary color should be palace that'll be your site okay so we have this one now let's go and import this file in our main dot that and say import as I'll see after that. Now you see the error is gone. The error is gone here. So we can save this file. And now we have our main root widget set up. So this material dot material app widget also accept a home. And then this home will just accept a widget and then just um create the page that we need. So we say home screen. And then, so what I'm, I've done here is I've created an instance of the home screen widget which we've not created yet. So let's go into our home, uh, our SLC folder, and then create another file called uh, home screen. That's that. And in here we can see a class. Sorry, we need to import the package material. And to put our class and this time I want a stateful widget I will explain to you why I need a stateful widget because some information will change 
in this particular region because there's some information that will change here when you look sometimes the information is here will change so we will need a stateful region so let's create our stateful widget so just watch how i just create this Let me just copy this class name here and then I say and we need to also override the build method here. And we need to accept the build contest. Okay. So we have this one. We can let's return now for it. Now means we are returning nothing. We are returning everything. So let's import the home screen file here. So SRC. SRC slash home screen dot dot. I don't know why I'm getting an error here. Oh, okay, they are in the same file, so let's remove the SRC there. Okay, so we got it. Okay. So now here we need to return a scaleful widget, and the scaleful widget will just create one page, one page for us. So we just need scaleful. This white background you see here is just the scaleful widget that we need. It's just a scaleful widget will just create a page where we can have our bottom navigation. We can also have our navigation bar we can also have our app bar but here we don't need that we don't need an app bar so i can just go ahead and create the body of the application as you can see this is actually a list view so what i'm going to do is create a list view in the main body so this view and this list view accept children and then children will be the widgets that we have to pass to it so first we need to create this top information here what would we like to eat so let's do that and in this one we are going to need uh, a, row. a row and then this one will also accept children and then what we are going to do is um, we are going to need a column here i'll explain to you why we need a column you see these two information what do we like to eat we are going to put Inside the column, we are going to put this first test and then we put this one to here. And then the column will always arrange each other in the house, uh, in the vertical order. So it will arrange one from top to the bottom. It will arrange the widget from top to the bottom. And then the row will arrange widgets from the left to the right or on the vertical axis. So here we can put in our text. And then we can say what would, and then we can also. Oh, sorry, we need to as uh, yeah, we need to use the argument children and then pass in the widget. Yeah, and then we can also create another test and say what would you like to eat. Yeah. So we have this one, and then we have to come outside of the column and also create this icon. So say icons dot icon dot notification. So we have this one, and then you see. Let's run this application and see what we got. So our application is up and running, and it's not the best application we've seen so far. So what I'm going to do is uh first I'm going to remove this debug flag from there. So let's go into app app dot dot. And then we can save that and then we don't have it anymore there. So back to our home screen. Here I want us I want the space to be between this and the icon, the information in the icon. So inside our row, let's say main as this alignment and say main as this alignment dot space between. And then this will try and um, put space between these two um widgets to put space between the column widget and then the icon 
So now let's also set the style for for the text. Say text style, and then we can say the font size should be thirty two point zero. And also let's say the font width. Let's say font width that bold. And then let me see. Oh, we have an error. Yeah, we can't actually get here. So we have this. Let's save this and see what we get. Okay. Since we are going to use the same test style for the for the second one, I'm going to remove this one and then create a variable here to hold to hold the test style. So I can say final test star and then I can pass this test star to this one. And then I can also pass it to this one. Star and then say test star. Okay, so let's see and see. So now I want this test to align with this one. So inside my column I will set the cross as its alignment of this one and say start let's see what we get now you can see this test is aligned with this one and also i want this icon to move to the top to align with the first test here so inside my row i can also set the cross axis to cross axis alignment to start so now let me explain to you what happened what just happened the difference between the main axis alignment and the cross axis alignment is that suppose you're in a row, then the main axis alignment will be the vertical axis because the the row always arrange its children with it in the vertical axis. So the main axis alignment will be the vertical axis. So if I should say the main axis alignment does start, then it will actually move the radius to the to the left and if I say that end then it will start uh, putting its children with it on the right so that's that's basically the difference between these cross axis and then main axis alignment and also I want to put a space around this whole page so inside my list view I can set a pattern and then I say edge Edge inside that dot only, and then I can say top so 20 and zero mm, bottom. I don't need a bottom, so left and then 20 and zero, and then right so 20 and zero. So let's see and see how we get okay. Uh, there's less space at the top there, so I also want to increase the so 50. Okay, I think that's okay for me. And I also want to increase the size of the icon here, so let's say size and then make it 30.0. Okay, let me just change the icon notification. I think there's one that I need. Uh -huh, notification that now yeah, that is what I need actually okay and also let's set the color to the color of our team so the final color so now we have our top info done okay I think this video is already long let's end here and then we'll continue in another video tutorial thank you